The audience that's looking at YouTube, which I venture to say includes an awful lot of people in the um, marketer's dream, males sort of 17 to 25. Um, the sorts of people who look at those YouTube videos all the time can actually see <coughs> these messages if government's doing it well. Next thing is when the person who's talking to you about this from a government organisation isn't someone who works in IT and it's not someone who works in communications. If you think about the senior executives, if you know them, who are using Twitter or social media at the moment, I'd suggest that you can probably count them on one hand. Right? Um, uh, Sandy Logan in Diet doing a tremendous job, but he's their spokesman driving stuff out like that. Hank Yonder in Centrelink or DHS, the same sort of thing, putting information out to help customers, to help and provide services online. But after that, the link, it gets a bit thin. Right? Um, and I think there's a, a way to go. When you see that happening, when business talks about social media, then we'll know we're on a winner. The next thing is when indexing is widely used for this. Now this is a stretch to get an eye on it. Um, <laughs> but the idea is that you can go online and find things out that have been transferred using social media. Information that's been passed that way. I find that I'm doing that now. My favourite um, tweets, I look at other sites and things like that, and I read blogs and I'm getting useful, interesting information about what's going on. To be able to search that and connect it, that's really important. And when that's across social media easily, and you don't have to be an expert to do that, then that's going to be when we're on a winner. Find, or the next one, when expectations are met. So when people don't say, well, he would say that, wouldn't he? Or that's a big promise, or you know, I'd expect that to happen, or wait till that fails. Th those sorts of things, when we start meeting expectations, and delivering policy advantages or policy benefits or service delivery advantages in these arrangements, then we'll know we're on a winner. And finally, when the Secretary wants to put out um, some information to the public, when they, want to make a, when they want to get some point across, when their first choice is to blog rather than to make a speech, because blogging gets to many more people much more quickly than a speech does, and importantly, and no offence to anyone who happened to be a journalist, isn't interpreted as a, by, by someone else first, but rather gets the message out to people um, in the language that the secretary wants to use, then we'll know we're on a winner in social media. <coughs> um, I think that'll be the time when social media is no longer a question, but still not the answer yet. That's it. I'll stick my hand up. Um, there's been a bit of discussion about social media versus online engagement um, and the impacts which come from it. How do you see the differentiation between the two? Just that social, just that uh, I, from the experiences, the conversations which I've been involved in, online engagement tends to have a bit more of a a business benefit to it, whereas social media is often seen more as a, oh, we'll shove an account up and we'll push some information out and that's about the value we'll ever get out of it. Um, do you see, do you oh, come at it from, so, so from a different perspective as well? Yeah, as, no, as I think it's an interesting out? question. I think what we're seeing is online service delivery um, and we're working at online service delivery a lot more. Um, in in Agino, we're working with DHS um, for a range of things. I don't know if you've um, noticed, but if you have a Centrelink or a um, Medicare or a child support account, um, you would have been encouraged or be in the process of being encouraged to move to a single Australia.gov.au account um, in order that you can connect online um, with those services with a sort of single sign-on arrangement and things like that. And delivering services is a very useful thing that we can do online. Um, the um, the, one of the lessons, I think, from Obama, Obama's campaigns um, and subsequent um, presidency um, is the notion that um, you campaign on Twitter but you rule in prose. And I think um, you're going to deliver online things a lot more in, in sort of more, it's wrong to say traditional, but more website-oriented things when you have to get big points across. Um, what you can do on Twitter is attract attention. 
Um, another quote that I've heard about this is the notion that you um, plan on Facebook, you organise on Twitter and you report on YouTube. And I think that sort of gives you a view of where it is that you can get um, the, sort of the right sort of benefits of tools. Um, if you think you're going to deliver policy on Twitter, then that's not going to work. Um, similarly, if you think you've got a mechanism for avoiding um, getting into some uncomfortable discussion on Facebook, um, then that's also wrong. Um, there are things that I think we need to realise that you've got to get the right tool, and it's a struggle sometimes to find what that is, particularly when the tools are new. Yeah. I thought it was interesting you, you mentioning that um, you know, soon would come a time when, when we as a general public would uh, be reading the minister's blog, but I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on the minister's reading and commenting on blogs that are being written now. Um, for instance, I recently wrote a, a, a piece I interviewed Vince Cerf, the father of the internet, and he spoke a lot about his views on the NBN and um, Stephen Conroy. And for me to then go to, for instance, uh, Malcolm Turnbull and, and, and Mr. Conroy for comment, uh, which, which I did, but was, was an, an interesting exercise. You know, this, is, this was a piece that was being read, you know, 2,000 hits a day. And, 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 and uh, Mr. Turnbull did, did comment, but I, 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 I wonder what your view is as, 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 uh, as towards them actually taking blogs seriously enough to, to um, find it of use to comment publicly. So I'm most clearly talking in my professional capacity at the moment. Um, the, the challenge for... Um, people in the public view to comment on blogs is um, the, the problem that it deteriorates very quickly into a parochial partisan discussion. Um, it's been said of the ABC news site that if you look at the string on comments of comments on any news article, after about 50 it's polarised into Labor and Liberal, it doesn't matter what the topic is, but it's polarised into Labor and Liberal comments. Um, about those sorts of things. Yeah, she's <laughs> um, the, the, the challenge that, that's confronted by public officials, be they elected officials or um, senior public servants, is this is a level of discussion that you can't <coughs> win. Um, if you think about, you might have seen on TV um, Anthony Albanese confronting um, a, a demonstrator's outside his office or outside someone's office the other day, and dealing what was effectively with almost physical pushing and shoving, um, screaming down of, of what he's trying to do, the inability to get a message out, and the and, and the the lack of rationality that occurs in those things. Now, the challenge for um, people in this space is how do you deal with that lack of rationality? Um, I experienced in um, January this year. No, no, something like that. Um, we had a March nodding, I think it was around then. Um, we put out um, late last year the, um, the uh, Common Operating Environment Policy for um, government IT, government desktops. Um, this is an arcane subject, right? Um, the, the, it, it affects a range of people, um, and, but not very much. And yet we got the most comments ever on our blog about the difference between ECMA 376 um, OOXML, ODF and things like that. And some of those comments were quite um, confronting. Um, there are people who are happy to tell me what an idiot I am. Um, the, um, we actually, one of the most, um, we, we've only, on our blog, despite all those comments, we've only not published 13 comments. Um, and of the 13, I think three were in the caretaker period where we're not allowed to publish political stuff. Um, and the other sort of 10 were where there's just too much um, incredibly bad language or something like that, death threats or those sorts of things um, to, to publish. But the amount of it worked up, over, what I've got to tell you is a very insignificant issue in the big world of things. Um, it is a real challenge. And I think this is, we need to think how are we going to get that debate, as self-moderating as, as social media communities are, how are we going to get that debate to the stage where someone can make a public comment and not, and, and get, have a discussion about logic rather than get attacked about their hair colour. And until we get that sort of arrangement, 
people in public office aren't going to go and do those things all the time, and frankly, I don't blame them.